Formula One is preparing for its biggest shakeup in a decade. So here is everything that we know so far about the technical and engine regulation changes planned for 2026. The pinnacle of motorsport will implement drastic modifications to its rulebook in 2026 with a new generation of cars. Not since Formula One introduced the turbo hybrid power units back in 2014, has the series made such vast changes in a bid to produce net zero exhaust CO2 emissions. Formula One chiefs have vowed that the new power units will produce the same 1,000 horsepower as the current engines. But a greater proportion of the power will come from electrical means and use significantly less energy. F1 drivers will also see the return of a push-to-pass button. The new regulatory revolution concerning power units and aerodynamics in Formula One, starting with the 2026 championship, is approaching rapidly. After the definition of specifications regarding second-generation hybrid turbo units in August 2022, teams proceeded to carry out simulations regarding their performance, using virtual models adhering to the current regulatory framework. The result was disastrous, up to the extent that it forced the technical direction of the FIA to completely revisit the aerodynamic and chassis aspects of the ground-effect Formula One cars. The draft of the regulations governing the design of the aerodynamic foundation for future Formula One single-seaters will be released at the end of 2024. The constructors that have accepted the technological challenge at the moment are Red Bull Powertrains, which is basically Ford, Mercedes, Ferrari, Honda, Renault, and Audi. From 2026, the engines will no longer make use of the complex energy recovery system motor generator unit, heat, which contributes during acceleration by minimizing the so-called turbo lag, which is the delay between throttle pressure and turbocharger activation. But how do the current Formula One power units work? In full throttle segments, the motor generator unit, Kinetic transfers all the power produced by the MGUH to the wheels. The power flowing from the battery to the MGUK is bound by the battery charging system so that below a certain energy store charge threshold, the power supplied to the MGUK is automatically cut off. During braking, part of the kinetic energy of the vehicle recovered and converted into electrical energy is delivered to the generator dedicated to exhaust enthalpy to maintain the turbocharger group at a set rotation speed, while the excess is stored in the battery. During release, the energy needed to maintain the turbocharger group at a set rotation speed is drawn from the energy store. The acceleration phase after a release phase is divided into two periods. In the first phase, as soon as the accelerator pedal is pressed, energy is drawn from the battery to power the turbocharger group. Once the reference speed is reached, the MGUH can receive energy from the turbocharger group. In the second phase, the MGUH directly supplies electrical energy to the MGUK, which contributes to accelerating the vehicle. Now let's shift focus to how the second generation power units work. The removal of the motor generator unit Heat from the architecture of the new power units is due to the limited possibility of replicating the complex system on road cars, and above all, at the explicit request of the Volkswagen Group, which demanded its removal as an essential condition so that Porsche and Audi would not suffer a significant technological delay compared to other manufacturers already involved in Formula One. The loss of the motor generator unit, heat will be balanced by tripling the current power offered by the MGUK increasing to 350 kilowatt, approximately 469 horsepower, which will bring the division between the internal combustion engine and the electrical energy to a parity contribution in terms of power. Additionally, the removal of the motor generator unit heat MGUH for a more powerful MGUK will help to reduce the costs of a new F1 power unit. F1 will also limit the amount of time that manufacturers can dyno test the new engines and the use of expensive materials. The greater electrical output will also see F1's 2026 engines require less fuel with a target of just 70 kg per Grand Prix. F1 will also introduce fully sustainable fuels from 2026 that will see no new fossil carbon burned. Carbon will come from non-food sources and municipal waste. Although the FIA claims to be satisfied with the simulations of the new aerodynamic package in terms of dirty flows towards the trailing car, it still deems it essential for active aerodynamic devices to facilitate overtaking maneuvers. The current drag reduction system will continue to exist in combination with other active aerodynamic devices to modify the adjustment of the front and rear wings on the straights. 
the side effect could be very low aerodynamic resistance, allowing for very high speeds on the straights that could make overtaking still challenging. The governing body is confident that the drag reduction system effect will be reduced compared to the current one. Once the threshold of 340 km per hour is reached, the assistance of the MGUK will progressively decrease, based on what is simulated together with the resistance profile of the future Formula One single-seaters. The lower aerodynamic resistance at high speeds will allow for lower electrical power support. In this way, a dramatic speed clipping in the longer straights and subsequent deceleration, as observed in simulations conducted by various teams using the current aerodynamic package of the single-seaters, should be avoided. Now let's also focus on the override mode that has been discussed a lot in the last few weeks. The 2026 Formula One cars will also be supported by an override system that drivers can activate to access more electrical power. When the manual override is activated, the MGUK will continue to deliver maximum power of 350 kilowatt beyond 340 kilometers per hour up to 355 kilometers per hour. However, it has not been decided how long this mode will last or how many times the driver can use it within a lap or race. These aspects will be governed by the sporting regulations once the final chassis rules are established and confirmed. It will give drivers a brief power boost at a point of their choosing to defend, attack or gain lap time. But drivers must also manage the energy levels. The introduction of this boost is part of a regulatory framework that has failed to put the driver's skill at the center of the show. Despite the regulatory revolutions of 2022 and the upcoming one in 2026, the use of active aerodynamics devices is increasing, diminishing the willingness of the drivers to take bold risks and making the spectacle artificially more lively. Nevertheless, the FIA believes that the combination of active aerodynamics and override is the best solution for the future of Formula One. This is believed in terms of matching the characteristics of the car and the engine, aspects that contribute to preserving the traditional skills of the driver and avoiding the danger of Formula One becoming a large automated exercise in energy manipulation relative to power unit. Analyzing the geometry of the racing tracks raises another question, except for the Monza circuit and the Baku city circuit, on which tracks do speeds exceed 340 km per hour. Formula One will improve on the chassis regulation changes it first introduced in 2022 with the 2026 rules. The series wants to further revise the ground effect rules brought in to improve the racing as the cars currently weigh too much and also have too much overall downforce. The notion is for the 2026 cars to carry a weight reduction of around 50 kg while also being shorter and narrower. F1 is also eager for the changes to reduce the cornering speeds that drivers can hit from 2026. The final details of F1's chassis regulations are still to be finalized.